The Supreme Court recently heard a very important parents' rights case. Uh, it's a case that if it goes the right way, will give some basic rights to students and parents. If it goes the wrong way, basically what I think what will happen is uh, children in public schools could basically be declared wards of the state. The case is Alfred versus Green. Uh, it's an Oregon case that the facts are quite straightforward. In February 2003, a nine-year-old girl was pulled out of class by a school official and told to come to a room in the school. When she entered the room, she was left alone with two men. One was a social worker, a case worker, and the other was a policeman who had a gun. It was very visible. For two hours, the case worker quizzed the little girl about how her father touched her and those kind of things and inappropriately, whatever. The little girl kept saying, my daddy gives me hugs and kisses. Well, the little girl sitting there for two hours with no attorney, uh, the mother wasn't notified, wasn't brought into the room. Uh, it was getting late, the school buses were leaving. She looked out the window and she was becoming fearful. So eventually she said she lied. Later she said she lied and said she told my daddy touched me inappropriately. And that was it, the interview was over and off they go. Well, she gets home later and there, believe it or not, the same two men are interviewing her mother. That scared her. Later that night, she vomited five times. She was so upset and later confessed to her mother that she lied to just get out of the room. This was an interrogation, obviously. At no time was she told she could leave the room if she wanted to. She, did, she felt she couldn't leave the room. She was frightened. She wasn't told she could have a lawyer. There was actually a tape recorder that the policeman brought, but there's no transcript of what conspired except what the little girl has said uh, in court papers. Well, the charges against the father were later dismissed, so they really didn't have any grounding. In fact, uh, the mother sued and the case is now before the Supreme Court. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that by holding this little girl in that room for two hours with a policeman and a caseworker with no lawyer or whatever and no court order, there was no judge involved or anything, that this violated the little girls, the nine-year-old girls, Fourth Amendment rights against an illegal search and seizure. What is troubling about the case is, is that usually the Supreme Court takes a case to either reverse the decision or to clarify. One reason the Supreme Court's hearing this case is that 40 state attorney generals and the Obama administration has filed very strong uh, friend, of co friend of the court briefs arguing that once a child is in the custody of the school, they really have no Fourth Amendment rights, that the government can come in and do this to little children. This case, however, is not the exception to the rule. Uh, at the Rutherford Institute, I've been involved in arguing cases over the years, and we've been involved in hundreds upon hundreds of cases dealing with schools, zero tolerance policies, cases like this with aggressive social workers and policemen. So this is not an exception to the rule. So the Supreme Court can really do a good thing here. They can give national guidelines and say, hey, if it's not an emergency, and again, we want abuse to be investigated, if it's not an emergency, in which this case was not an emergency, uh, you have to get a court order. You at least have to go through the basic rudiments uh, and the protections and guarantees under our Constitution. If not, what this case could mean is that children are wards of the state. If they're in the custody of the public schools, they have no rights, and parents have no rights.